Hi there, this is Joanne from howtospell.co.uk and this is my spelling tip number 7 in my top 10 spelling tip series. Spelling tip 7 is take an interest in words. Enjoy the quirkiness of English spelling, the rules and exceptions and know why words are spelt the way they are. And you won't get frustrated with spelling and you'll learn and remember and understand spellings. In this video we're looking at some fun facts about spelling and why there are so many words that mean the same thing or slightly different. Let's look at some fun facts. Lots of words to do with nose begin with the letter pattern SN. Snout, sniff, snub, snot, snore, snort, snozzle, snooty. Plumber has a silent B in there because it comes from the Roman Latin word plumbum, meaning lead piping used by plumbers. And what about those knock, knee, knuckle, nor, nat? They're all Viking words, old Norse words, and the K and G were pronounced, but not now, but we keep the K and G in to show the history of the word. Did you know that no English words end in V or U? There's always an E on the end. Give, have, love, eve, twelve, glue, rescue, blue, true. But, 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 we have a few exceptions which are either abbreviations, slang, ancient words or words borrowed from other languages. For example, rev and flu are abbreviations. Rev, revolution or reverend, and flu, influenza. And borrowed words from other languages, menu from French. And we have some slang like chav and spiv. And then we have a very old Anglo-Saxon, old English word, you. And did you know that there are no English words ending in J? The sound is made by D-G-E, G-E, J, bridge, badge, hedge, marriage, bandage, age. But we have some foreign words like haj and raj. Let's look at why we have so many words that mean the same thing or slightly different. English developed from the tribes that invaded us. The Celts, Romans, Angles, Saxons, Jutes, Vikings and finally the French. English developed from these peoples, the Angles and the Saxons and the Vikings and was a phonetic language. But then the French came along invaded us, conquered us and changed the spellings and introduced loads of new words and strange spellings. Hmm. There are many words the French gave us. For example, deceased. But in Anglo-Saxon English, we have dead. Do you know the down-to-earth Anglo-Saxon words for these formal French words? So we have the French deceased, obtain, perspiration, odour, desire, conceal, infant, commence. The Anglo-Saxon Old English words are either very simple words or one-syllable words. So deceased we've seen is dead. Obtain, get, perspiration. Mm, can you think of another word for perspiration? Ooh, poo. Sweat. What about odour? <laughs> odour. Smell. Desire. Want. Conceal. Can you think of another word for conceal? Hide. What about infant? What's another word for infant? Child and commence means begin. Writers like George Orwell were big fans of using Anglo-Saxon words in writing and not the big overblown French ones. 
we can see the influence of Anglo-Saxon, French and Latin on our choice of words we can use nowadays. We've got Anglo-Saxon, French and Latin. Look at these. We've got the Anglo-Saxon ask, the French question, the Latin interrogate. Fire, flame, conflagration. Wealth, riches, opulence. Kingly, royal, regal. Notice how the Latin is quite formal and specific. The French more elegant and a bit formal. And the Anglo-Saxon is informal and down to earth. So my top 10 spelling Tip number seven is take an interest in words. Enjoy the quirkiness of spelling and know why words are spelt the way they are. And you won't get frustrated with spelling and you'll learn, remember and understand spelling. If you're interested in words and the origins of English, then check out my ebook Why English Spelling is So Weird and Wonderful. Pop over to my website www.howtospell.co.uk and check it out there. And check out the free lessons and games too. Loads of them on there. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in spelling tip number eight. Bye.